didn't like her attitude. She was too arrogant. She had no respect for it. tradesmen. And uh, if I'd have worked for her, I would have been lying on the floor and she would have had a high-heeled boot in the middle of my back. So the first job was in what they called the pool room in the basement where there was a pool table and a big fireplace and there were seven foot ivory tusks bracing the fireplace with big gold crowns on them. And they looked like imitations. But anyhow, he had been on an elephant hunt to Africa. So I came away with that impression and I thought, okay, you like elephants? Here's an elephant for your fireplace. Here's another elephant for your fireplace. These were proposals. I'm supposed to be looking for work. These are valued billionaire customers. We'll hang the broom on those tusks. So can you imagine what happened when she showed these to him? He said, you know, he probably said, who the hell is this guy? Get him out of my house. I like him. I like the dreamy. Look at the little wisps of hair. He's got a few hairs on his dome. They almost got all this slack hanging down here, you know? You wonder what all that slack is. Oh, okay, so I did something straight that I would have proposed to him. Had she shown any sensitivity at all, I would have done a fireplace like this with copper and colors and a sunset. You know, I wasn't going to buy any screen. I was going to weave that screen out of steel wire. It was going to be different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something unique. Just, just for them. <clears throat> but she's too young to know about that. She's only 32 years old, so she hasn't had a, Her experience has been handing out salted almonds to the uh, flying tourists. You know, she's a stewardess. So how could she know anything? All she knows is puke bag. <laughs>
And then on the 4th of July, one of the locals, uh, they got booze on the 4th. And uh, I used to try to hide from them. And one of them threatened to shoot me, one of the villagers, because he knew what I was up to. I was after their women. <laughs> and this was only because I overhauled the women's toilet. <laughs> so, changes, you know, uh, any modest change, whether it's a little red leatherette pocket radio in Africa, change the, the, change the lives of a whole village or improving a toilet in Alaska in a cannery. The, you know, those things are dramatic. So. That's the this is the bootmaker. I better, shall I dust it off? They're pretty dusty. Got uh, her sewing kit in her lap. And so she has her ulu and her needle case and uh, all her all her stuff there in her lap. And she's sewing on a mukluk, a mukluk booth. Mm. She's wearing mukluks. So I call her the bootmaker. This is called moving camp. You know, like in summer when you only got a camp and bedding and some, you know camp stuff. And what's this one called? <coughs> uh, hunting party. They're out looking for uh, polar bears or seals. So since everything is flat out there, why they stand on each other so they can see. And uh, he's got an old pair of. French field glasses. And this guy is just coiling up lines and tending to gear. <clears throat> that guy's wearing snow goggles. And uh, this heavy stick is for probing in the ice to make sure it's thick enough to walk on. There's a little bear track that they've probably been looking at. Polar bear and seal. Just about one more step, and you can smack that poor seal in the head. The seal's looking the wrong way. start out a hunt, a shooting at them on the rocks and uh, so you get one or two shots and then they all go in the water and then my brother-in-law would talk to them on the back of his hand and they tread water and stretch their necks out so you get another shot at them <laughs> but you got to be able to talk seal. <laughs>